Hello there, minions. It's Wheezy. Today I want to talk to you about the Modern Warfare 2 beta and just share all my thoughts. So let's go talk about it. Okay, minions. So this weekend was the first weekend of the Modern Warfare 2 beta. So it was the PlayStation exclusive weekend which I was initially kind of bummed about because I thought I wasn't going to get in on the early access piece, um, which is where you had to pre-order on PS5. Um, although I do have a PS5, so the second couple of days of the weekend was open to anyone with a PS5, even non-pre-orders. Um, but I ended up getting uh, an early beta token through Xfinity. Um, so I got to play, you know, basically four days of the Modern Warfare 2 beta, um, which is which was exciting and I just got to have so much fun with it and now there's this few days break before the second part of the beta kicks off next weekend with um, early access for pre-orders starting I think Friday, Saturday and then Sunday, Monday being the full open beta for everyone, PC, Xbox, PlayStation, blah, 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 whatever the platform. And I'm thinking for that part, I may actually jump into the PC beta just to try it out because I've done PS5 now I'm gonna do Series X because that's where I got my pre-order. I may jump on the PC and see how my keyboard and mouse not skills uh, work on that. Um, but yeah, I wanna talk about what uh, what I got to play in the beta and my thoughts on it, so let's just get into it. I'm gonna roll gameplay in the background uh, that's hopefully relevant to what I'm talking about. But the first thing that I wanna talk about is, um, I don't wanna make like a list of good and bad, so I'll just kind of address both as I go. Start with the gameplay. The controls feel super solid. Like they feel like what you'd expect from Call of Duty controls, or at least what I would expect from Call of Duty controls, where they're smooth and responsive and they feel modern and clean. Um, the the gunplay is really good. There's They've taken out slide canceling, which is good because I hated that as part of the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 meta. Um, that said, I have seen that people are making special controller settings and they're like sprint slide melee cancel that whatever i don't give a shit about the super try hard sweats and hopefully since infinity ward intended to take slide canceling out they'll fix that too um but the controls feel good they added dolphin diving which i love um i haven't gotten a lot of use out of it and i probably won't it'll be one of those things that's kind of uh fun and and it leads to some cool moments but isn't a huge part of the game um, ledge hanging is also not a huge part of the game, but I have noticed um, a few situations where uh, it's come into play. Um, I've used it a couple of times, and it's kind of a neat feature when you have a pistol secondary and you're worried about just leaping over a wall where someone might shoot at you. You can grab it, peek over, and take some shots at someone. Um, so, kind of to be determined on that one. It could add some interesting elements into the game. Uh, so far, I don't hate it. Um, and I've actually used it a couple of times effectively, so uh, who knows? Um, the time to kill in the game feels very much like Modern Warfare 2019, which is to say I feel like that's perfect. I felt like the time to kill in Vanguard was way too fast. Um, I'm trying to remember what I thought about the time to kill in Cold War. I, I also remember thinking that was pretty fast, um, which is part of why you get killed around corners and stuff like that, but I know it was way too fast in Vanguard. Um, so time to kill feels really good. Uh, as far as that, the um, the balance of um, the game, as far as weapons is concerned, to be determined, right? Because it's still beta. Um, that said, Infinity Ward has typically done a pretty good job with that in the past. Although they do kind of like their one-hit kill or super fast TPK weapons being mixed in. So there do tend to be some try-hard guns that kind of show up. The ones in 2040, in 2040, 2042. In Modern Warfare 2019, that stand out to me, the AS Val was a super fast killer, although it didn't become super, super um, common and overpowering. And then a lot of the one-hit kill guns, the uh, marksman rifles and the sniper rifles that are quick ADS that allow you to get one shot. Um, and some of the shotguns, although that's less of an issue because if you're face-to-face -face with somebody, you're going to take a risk of getting one shot. But 
when it comes to weapon balance, one of the things that's always kind of irritated me, but it's not something I necessarily need fixing in uh, Infinity Ward's Call of Duty games is one-hit kill weapons. One of the things I did like about um, like Cold War was that the way that they balance snipers, even though they're one-hit kill, is it was really hard um, to do a good like fast ADS build. So people who ran around doing you know elite skills, quick scoping. Um, was not super common uh, in Cold War. You know, they made it to where if you wanted to play a sniper effectively, pretty much had to be a sniper. Um, although if you missed my playlist where I did the Call of Duty competitive uh, ranked playlist by doing quick scopes only, if you missed that, you might want to check it out because <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, we'll see how all that plays out. But like I said, as of right now, it looks really good. The, the game plays really well. Just through the first 15 levels, right? The second weekend is going to open up to 30 levels, I believe, as far as unlocks. Um, so essentially every weapon that you can see in the menus in the beta currently that you can't get access to, um, either, either at all or you can kind of through a glitch like the MP5, um, those will all be opened up for full the full unlock trees, which is I think why the UI has some weird bugs in it right now since they kind of artificially capped um, at level 15 for these unlocks, it's kind of weird. Um, so, yeah, I, I, they'll be fun to play with, but leave a lot for the main game, uh, I expect, uh, to play with. So that'll be cool. Um, connections is the one thing that I've really kind of been stuck on with this one. This Modern Warfare 22 um, has... A significant amount of what I would consider connection advantage, advantage um, instances where I'll get killed around a corner uh, sometimes because on their screen it looks like, although even in the kill cams, um, it looks like that you're missing. So there's either a mismatch between the kill cams and what the server sees uh, or there's some really weird hit registration stuff that happens every now and then. Um, and then conversely, there, it, there is sometimes, depending on the connection, depending on the game, uh, a significant connection advantage, a peeker's advantage, where essentially the person who comes around the corner first gets to see you and shoot at you for probably a tenth to a quarter of a second, which is significant when you've got time to kills on the order of a quarter of a second. So it can feel like someone jumps around the corner and instantly, like, one shot kills you with, like, a assault rifle that would take five or six bullets to kill you. And that's because on their screen, they came around the corner, saw you, aimed, fired five or six shots, and killed you. But on your screen, they appeared, and then you were dead. Um, there, I That's not systemic. I don't see it all the time, and I don't see it as much as I did in Cold War uh, and Vanguard, where I felt like I saw that shit all the time. Um... It depends on the match. There are some matches in Modern Warfare 22 where I feel like that happens quite a bit. And then there are other matches where it feels like I don't worry about that at all. Um, something to keep an eye on. The last thing I want to talk about related to gameplay, and I'm going to do a separate video on this because I think it's a big enough issue that people ought to know about it. Um, and I talked about it in my recent Twitch stream, if you guys didn't. Notice I post on the community channel. I'm going to start streaming a little bit more, and I've decided rather than filling that up in my YouTube channel, uh, I'm going to let that offload to Twitch. Um, that way people who care about live streams and stuff like that can go over there. People who find my YouTube channel will find my more produced content. But anyway, I did talk about this more there, but I want to do a full video um, for this channel about skill-based matchmaking, where this is something that people don't understand about what people think skill-based matchmaking exists to make every game super try-hard. But the short answer is that skill-based matchmaking exists to try and keep people engaged with a game by trying to dictate how many wins and losses they get and in which order. Um, which means that every couple of games, um, the game will try to feed you basically a couple of wins and then it'll intentionally feed you a loss by dumping you in with a game either with a bunch of losers on your team or with some super sweaty tryhards on the other team. Um, so instead of trying to make every game super competitive, it tries to dump you into a quantifiable pattern of wins and losses to try and psychologically manipulate you into continuing to play the game. That is very painfully apparent uh, in Modern Warfare 22. Um, it's been pretty painfully apparent, honestly, in most shooters over the last few years, if you know to look for it. Otherwise, if you just feel like you don't really know what's going on, it might feel like, oh, I have to try super hard every game. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. 
The reality is, whether you try hard or not, the, the game's matchmaking is going to feed you a loss every two or three games, regardless of what you do. Um, and so, unfortunately, that's going to be in Modern Warfare 22, it's in 2042, it's in Modern Warfare 2019, it's in Vanguard and Cold War. I'll talk about that more fully in another video, the history of that and where it came from and why it's stupid and wrong. Um, but that's going to be a thing in Modern Warfare 22. So, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Um, so, now I want to talk a little bit about the weapons. Gunsmith 2.0, playing around with that a little bit. I'm excited for that. The ability to unlock an optic for a certain class of weapon or platform of weapon and then not have to re-unlock that. I really like that. Like, if you unlock a certain op optic for the SMG, then you can use it on other SMGs. I haven't really figured out if it's all SMGs across all platforms or just all the guns in that platform. Um, I think, from what I've heard, I haven't really ironed it out, but basically you unlock an optic for an SMG, and you can then use that optic on all SMGs from the different platforms. But anyway, the point being, the, there's still gonna be a good grind there as far as having things for you to unlock um, and pursue, because I, you know, I enjoy that part of the game. Uh, a good amount. Um, in past years, I probably didn't as much. Um, that's not true. I guess going all the way back to COD 4, I really enjoyed the grind of uh, getting gold camos, where back then it was just uh, headshots. So I would, there would be some matches. Um, I would just be going around with a silence weapon, you know, trying to grind headshots by sneaking up on people and, and getting those close range headshots. But so there's, there's going to be a lot of goodness there as far as unlocking things. The weapon customization with Gunsmith 2.0 looks really awesome. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. Uh, that looks solid. The unlock trees being across platforms is a cool way of doing that. Like the fact that even the beta, you can like, or you could have at the first 15 levels. Well, it's a little level 16 unlock. So if you didn't already do it, you know, it won't matter uh, in the new one that you can kind of glitch your way into unlocking the weapon platform, the Lightman 5.56 or whatever it is. Um, that's not even the 5.56, it's the Lightman larger rifle that the 5.56 is a subcategory off of and then the MP5 is a subcategory off of that. Licensing issues obviously are in play here. It's the HK platform. Um, that'll be unlocked as part of the second part of the weekend of the beta, but, right, that was something they was able to kind of unlock and, and the way that you can build out those different weapon platforms and, and build out those unlocks and take, you know, something that's an assault rifle platform and, you know, like with the M4, put the M16 with the burst fire receiver on it or an SMG receiver or a battle rifle receiver where it's a, a marksman rifle. Um, I think that that's really cool. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting more platforms in the game. Uh, to play with the uh, vector platform. That'll be interesting to see what they do with that, right? Because that's a pretty dedicated uh, SMG sort of platform, but you, we'll see. Um, that's going to be a cool thing. One thing that's interesting about the weapons um, as well, I guess I didn't really mention it explicitly, um, more recoil, it seems, across all weapons, which is cool in that I think that it's making it so that weapons aren't all complete laser beams at all ranges. But at the same time, that makes me a little concerned that the weapons that allow you to add attachments so that they do become laser beams at longer range will become very heavily in the meta. For instance, currently the M16 has such horrendous burst spread that it's essentially, like, it's just basically not great at long range because the burst is so spread out. And at medium and close range, that burst fire uh, isn't powerful enough to get you consistent kills. It's like consistently about a two burst kill unless you just straight up get a burst to the upper ch upper chest and head which like i said because it's so spread out you can't do so the m16 feels super fucking weak right now because of the increased burst spread um whereas like um some of the other weapons that have more of an ability to kind of stay on target at medium to longer ranges do a little bit better so I like the increased recoil. I like that the guns feel meatier and feel a little bit more like you would expect a gun to feel. Like out of the box, they feel kind of all over the place and then you add attachments and you start to dial them in in a way that's more significant. I really like that. I am concerned to see how they're going to balance that across the different guns in the game. But one thing that they did add into the game, which is a cool little realism piece, but definitely threw me off the first few times I encountered it, is reload canceling. They now have progressive reload animations uh, in Call of Duty, which Battlefield has done for um, 
I believe a while, if I remember correctly. Um, but what that means is, as you go through the stages of your reload, when you do a reload cancel or you switch weapons, your reload will pick up where it was. So, for instance, if you're using, like, the um, Hurricane, you know, the P90 magazine attachment for the M4 platform, if you hit, hit reload on that, and when the guy starts to pull the gun up and you YY reload cancel, then you can start firing again immediately with whatever's left in that magazine. As soon as the animation pulls that magazine off of the receiver, if you YY reload, you can't fire until the animation goes through putting the new magazine on and finishing the reload animation. Same thing with LMGs. If you start to do the reload animation where he kind of pulls the gun up and then gets ready to open up the the breach for it, um, or, you know, the where the belt feeds into the LMG. If you re reload cancel before it does that, you can start firing again. But if he pulls the belt out um, as part of that reload animation and then you YY, then as soon as the gun comes back up, he's going to start trying to reload that belt again. So a little extra realism there. Taking away YY reload canceling across the board, um, if you get to that progressive reload point, it's going to be something new to learn. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing, um, but it'll be... <laughs> It'll be interesting because that's a that's a multi-stage muscle memory you have to get. If someone surprises you right at the beginning of a reload, you'll you, you'll have to be able to know where you are in your reload process. Why why cancel it and fire? Or oh god, I'm too far into my reload. Single Y cancel, go to secondary. So I think that could be a cool new kind of skill gap thing to, to put in the game, but we'll have to have to be aware of it and have to learn it. So um, it's kind of my thoughts on the weapons and stuff like that. Uh, maps. I the I like the maps that are in the beta. They're not my favorite Call of Duty maps of all time. I feel like they've got a good basic three lane map design, so they don't feel too big. They feel nice. They feel pretty well laid out. It doesn't feel like any map has a particularly strong, unbalanced uh, side. Although there are some routes that are more irritating than others. And what I've noticed in a lot of these maps is there's quite a few routes through these maps that I just don't like at all. Like, I, there are gi giant chunks of the map I just don't want to move through because there are too many angles to cover. Um, and so I, I kind of find myself wanting to stick to the safer routes and the outer edges because that's a smart way to move through a map. If you want to reference some of my Wheezy's War College videos, I have Map Movement 101 um, where I talk about controlling angles of engagement as you move through a map. And um, So that's something that I'm kind of looking at at these maps is... How much of the map can I really use? Am I going to take this reasonably well laid out, decently sized map and only be able to use a small portion of it because moving anywhere else is like a death sentence? Um, although with uh, Farm, it has that kind of shoot house right in the middle of it, which is neat. Going into there and fighting if you don't have a close range weapon is kind of stupid, right? So it makes sense to stick around more on the outsides, the longer range engagements. Whereas if you go into the shoot house with like a shotgun, it can be a lot of fucking fun to just fucking smoke people at close range, right? But then you got to stay away from the doors because if you get close to the exits of that shoot house, then people with angles on those doors can fucking light you up, right? So, so I don't know. Maybe that's a good design choice as far as how they can play those roles off of each other. Um, so, I don't know. There's the the maps definitely have promise, and if Modern Warfare 22 ends up having all of the Modern Warfare 2 maps, like I'm, I've am i heard, it was rumored as happening. Um, like, I know a lot of those maps are just solid, you know, maps. And Infinity Ward maps in general are really great. So as many of the best, you know, legacy Infinity Ward, Call of Duty maps as can be brought into this game, I think will be awesome. I think the way that this game plays lends itself really well to those same maps in the same way that Modern Warfare 2019 uh, played really well on older maps, you know, like uh, Backlot and Crash, like they just fit into the game really well. I think something like an Overgrown, like Terminal, like any of the classic kind of Infinity Ward maps that that uh, you really love, I think they would fit well in Modern Warfare 22, so I'm hoping they do that. Um, talk a little bit about third person mode. Um, I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of third-person shooters in general. Um, so take my opinion on that with a grain of salt anyway. I don't think it should not be in the game. I think for the people who like that mode, good. I'm glad that it's in there and they can go into that playlist and play. That's fine. For me, I think it's awful because 
they really just took third person mode and smacked it into the, the base Modern Warfare 22 engine. And the way that Modern Warfare is designed to play as a first person perspective feels really cheesy in a third person perspective in that you can use that third person view to hot, to stay hidden behind corners and to peek using the third person camera so that you're completely not exposed. And then if people get out and become visible, you can pre-aim, step out in first person mode, because that's where the aim goes to, and then kill them and then disappear back behind cover. I think that's pretty shitty and cheesy, and that's that's gonna be the only intelligent way to play that game mode. Um, and even in Modern Warfare where you've got the mounting mechanic, right? If you mount up on anything, then you're by definition hanging partially out in there, even though you've got a little bit of cover. Whereas in first person mode, that gives you an advantage where you're peeking, and you've got a lot of your body obscured behind cover, but you can still shoot. In third person mode, mounting is a complete disadvantage because you leave yourself exposed to where someone who you can't see can see you through the third person camera, pre-aim where you are, mounted, step out, kill you, and then step back behind cover. I'm just not gonna be playing third person mode. Just that, you know, that alone would irritate the fuck out of me, so. Uh, anyway, that's my thoughts on third person mode. Um, to each their own. I got no problem with it being in the game. That said, other things on that line. Warzone 2, uh, Warzone 2.0, and DMZ. Obviously, we're not see we're not getting our hands on with those just yet. Although I do see Warzone 2 in the beta menu, so maybe they'll maybe they'll turn that on as part of the beta on like the last day or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not entirely certain if I'm gonna spend a lot of time in those modes when they come out with the full game. Warzone 2 is gonna come out about two or three weeks after um, Modern Warfare 22 launches, and then DMZ sometime after that, I think. Although I've heard someone say that it's gonna come out with the game, but they've given no information on it yet, whereas they've given a lot of information on Warzone 2, so I suspect DMZ is gonna be a next year kind of thing. Um, but we'll see how much that gets me into those games to try them out. I've never really even played an Extraction Royale, um, even when uh, 2042 had Hazard Zone, I literally never even tried it. I never even went into it to even try playing a game because there's nothing about that kind of mode that really interests me. I'm also not huge into battle royales either. Um, it's kind of the same reason I'm not a huge fan of single life modes like Search and Destroy and uh, even like their hostage rescue and stuff that they've added that have revives in it. I like being in a shooter where I can get a lot of action and not so much where there's a lot of time sitting or you have to play super reserved and cautious just to try and protect that so that you don't end up sitting. Um, so depending on how that works out and plays out and if I get people to play with where I enjoy that mode and we're sitting and waiting for a revive or a respawn or for my next life maybe isn't super irritating or I'm just sitting there like, okay, gotta watch all these randos just you know, try and clutch while I'm dead. Um, so that's TBD, but that'll be, you know, Interesting to see how that adds to the larger Modern Warfare 22 ecosystem. Um, and then, you know, they've got like a ground war mode that's coming back as well as mode that's gonna be like a hybrid kind of ground war with also a lot of like AI where you've got like strongholds and stuff that you can attack. So kind of like a competitive PVE kind of environment too. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. I am excited for the ground war component because of how Ground War was in Modern Warfare 2019, in that it's basically Battlefield, but in the Call of Duty engine, and so when I have that kind of itch to play some Battlefield, and there's not a good Battlefield game out to play, it's 2042, um, it'll be good to have Modern Warfare 22 be able to kind of scratch a little bit of that itch um, with its Ground War mode, so. That's, I've already been rambling for uh, a long time about this, so. Um, but that's my first impressions after, you know, the first weekend uh, of the beta, the first four days. Um, did you guys get a chance to play on the PlayStation beta? Are you looking forward to the second weekend so you can get in on the open beta? Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, you disagreed with shit I said. Um, let me know why, and I love having a conversation. And, and like I said, if you love third-person mode, cool. Probably won't play with you, <laughs> but you go and enjoy it. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, leave me a like. Uh, if you didn't, leave me a dislike. Stick around for a lot of Modern Warfare 2 content. Modern Warfare 22 content. Um, I'm going to be playing the shit out of that game. Also, other content. And also, if you didn't notice earlier, check out my Twitch channel. If you guys are interested in catching me live when I'm streaming, hopefully, you know, significantly more often, um, 
then go check out my Twitch channel and uh, follow me over there. One thing that's really cool, just as a side note, on my Twitch setup that I like is I've got my main recording PC, my main desktop that I use for doing normal game capture, and I've brought in my laptop as my kind of Twitch streaming machine. So I've got my HDMI splitter set up so that I can do both at the same time. So my face cam and my microphone hooked to my laptop when I'm streaming to Twitch, and then I can just do raw game capture at the same time on my PC, which means usually I have to choose if I'm gonna do like a live commentary or a stream where I'm gonna have my face up on the screen. I have to choose if I'm gonna be capturing for raw gameplay footage or if I'm gonna be okay with whatever footage I capture having my face stuck on it, right? If I wanna use that for like a produced video or a montage or something like that, having my face floating around up there isn't as ideal. So this will allow me to do kind of live gameplay commentaries and streaming while also still piggybacking and capturing for produced videos. For my workflow, that's really cool and it'll enable me to do both more often. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for more activity on Twitch. Not just Call of Duty, but pretty much a lot of the times I'm going to be gaming if I have the opportunity. I might just throw the stream on. Uh, okay, that's enough. I'll see you guys in the next one.